I'll find a king, my girl. Here we go. All right. So I actually found out what's the issue with this quest. And it's kind of stupid. I'm heading back to my capital for now. And we're going to um, add a new region to our barony. We are going to claim a new region. Something I didn't want to do. Something that I wanted to wait to do it and do the quest first. But since we can't do the quest right now, it's perfectly fine to add a new region to our barony. All right. Master pay No, no, thank you. Regions claim silver step. I want to claim silver step. Yes, I want to. 375. Okay. Um. Yeah, of course not. Um. Ooh. That's a steep price. Oh, something strange is happening in the region. Residents are complaining of strange misfortunes. Someone must be casting spells to harm the very subjects. The reason the culprit must be discovered. Okay, we just uh, expanded our uh, barony. Very nice. So before I hit one hold, I can still take care of minor... Um, organization stuff for our barony in this region. Success! The advisor's agents traced the source of the corruption. All the harmful items were purchased from Nazriel the weaponsmith. Holy shit. Temple of the people. The advisor was competent enough to organize the construction. Not a single coin was pilfered or wasted. Illicit hunters. Success. The region's people were able to persuade the poachers to stop. The rule of law has been restored to the fore. Warden needs your advice. Okay. Eureka! I see. Before the 1st of uh, the 11th. Okay. Just two more days and he can take care of it. Ergot. Oh. This again. Okay. What about our warden? Ikun's face is grim. Caught a swindler. He tried to pour a love potion into the merchant's daughter's drink. The family is well known, and the case is unusual. The people are watching, and his guilt is already proven. But the judges don't know how to punish him. You must decide. The usual punishment is, fi is a fine, but in this case, too soft. My suggestion? Prison sentence. Yeah... Execute the fool! Um, yep. Yeah. This is more than simple deception. Throw the villain in jail. Wise choice. Alright. Hello? Mim Wobblegander. There you are! I've wanted to see you in person for a long time. All of Brevois is talking about your feats. 
The girl is smiling curiously. Sizing you up, she finally nods to you. Mim Wobblegander, the greatest goldsmith in Restoff, at your service. Happy to meet the ruler of this land. You know, it's quite beautiful here. A view of a lake surrounded by picturesque green forests were inspiration for a lovely brooch design. I do have a sapphire, but no green jewels, and I have no idea who can help me with this. We are surrounded by simpletons here, who know nothing of sublime matters, except of you, of course. Uh, Mim looks at you meaningfully. What is the greatest goldsmith in Restoff doing in this backwater? Seeking recognition and inspiration. You see, not everyone in Restoff realizes how unfairly destiny has divided its gifts between me and my competitors. I got all the talent, you see, and they got all the glory and respect. It's all nonsense, though. I'll soon remedy this irksome situation. Besides, I'm mortally tired of rest of dust and grayness, and the view from here to the tours of Lemonese is beyond compare. Just look at those peaks, such mysterious power in their easy dignity. <sighs> Please remind me what you asked for. On Emerald, I plan to make a brooch that will combine the hues of the least lands, the blue of the cold lake and the green of the young pines. I do have a sapphire, but I'm missing a green jewel. Why should I help you? Let's say, if I'm provided an appropriate place to work, I couldn't mind staying for a while to draw upon the special inspiration that these lands give me. Of course, I would express gratitude to my patron from time to time with gifts befitting her status and my mastery. Uh, very well, you shall have your gemstone. Wonderful. I shall impatiently await your return. The green stone. Yes. We have new project crime prevention. Rights uh, provides a plus two bonus to resolve any opportunity with the warden. 100 BP. Support the warden's endeavors. Rank up the warden. I see. We can still rank up a lot of folks here. Claim the Northern Null Marches for 225. Oof. You know what? This is going to take another 14 days, so we're just skipping two days right now. A high society wedding. Two eminent merchant families are joining in a highly celebrated wedding. The Baron has received a request that a Spanish ceremony will be held in the main square of the capital. Okay, okay, um, we just wait one more day. Nature's Rage success. The counselor managed to locate the place where the raging animals swarm and cleanse it. Significant losses have been avoided. Very nice. The high priest seeks your advice. Jod nibbles his mustache annoyed. Oh, these stolen lands. They are breeding ground for filth. No sooner have I dealt with one crisis, but another is on its way. This time, a preacher of a religion that no one's ever heard has ventured onto your land. The people say that this priest speaks of some speakers of the depths. It's the first time I'm hearing any of this, but the name alone says you shouldn't expect anything good from them. But alas, not all our people are as re uh, reasonable as you and I. The preacher has already gathered his first followers. Your Grace, I beg you, please decide what we are to do with him. If you ask me, I say we should run him off with a pitchfork. I have never heard of these speakers of the depths. Who are they? The priest ponders. I know many gods. Some of them show favor to mortals, some show wrath. But some want nothing to do with the people of Golarion. The speakers of the depths may be of this sort. Who knows? All the more reason to prevent your subjects' heads to be filled with this rubbish. 
Ähm. I allow this preacher to profess his faith in my lands. God is annoyed and mumbles something, but then waves his hand with a sigh. As you wish. Uh, the executions will start when the rebellion starts, okay? Okay, divine, that's two. Mm -hmm. Two more. Support the high breeds endeavor, divine, two. The vine protection from poison provides immunity to poisons in the claimed region. These are nice bonuses. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, we could start this. Eureka! An outstanding local mage made an important magical discovery. He's going to Absalom to present his research to his foreign, foreign, to his foreign colleagues. There's no doubt that this will enjoy glory uh, and wealth there. But if he could be persuaded to stay and work for the crown, his research could advance the knowledge of the local magician. Percent. It's a catastrophe. The entire region's grain harvest is infected with ergot. The local people are suddenly facing famine. Okay, this is more important. Confront Nazriel. It turns out Nazriel's creation spread corruption. Maybe we don't really need that blade she's been trying to pawn off the Baron. The Aaron the Green Stone. <sighs> the village by Lake Silverstone wants you to find her an emerald. Okay, we're going to look for Nazriel. Going to look for Nazari. And uh, we're going to found a new um, settlement. Uh, only one settlement can be founded in this region. Um. And we are going to found one over here. Founding a new settlement. Silver Shire. Hmm. Silver Shire, Silver Step.
Hmm. How are we going to call it? What are we going to call it? Hmm. Hmm. We're just going to call it Silver Shah for now. We can, of course, just uh, change the name of the settlement later on. Yes, yes. Yes. Okay. Do we want to... Uh, now we're going to wait. Oh, yes. So we're going to visit Nasriel now. We're going to confront her. Book. I have no use for this. Oh, and we still have the three transmutations of bodily poisons books. We can return these to Boken. Yeah, that one as well. Oaken is still waiting for them. Ancient formula. Yes. At first, we're taking care of uh, Nazriel. Oh, we can sell some of this. Maybe going to store something of this here. Mallet of woe, we are taking this with us. Roll Reaper. Extra acid match. I think we should be fine with it. Should be fine. Cool crusher. Any other books I can store here? These three, of course, I need. Okay, let's talk to our storytellers. Hmm. 
points. Um, what do we have here? This is strange. Feel the traces of the rune magic of Tazalon, heavy spells of Cyclops, precise wizardry of Aslan, and the fresh wind of elven spells, all combined together. Now it's barely discernible underneath the mold of time. Who could have joined all these things? Their owner shrouded in a thick darkness, blacker than a depths. Find all five items, and then, I hope, the secret of their owner will reveal to it later. What about the gemstone cave? Gemstone cave? Uh, saddled horses neigh and stomp the hooves. They cannot wait to travel distant lands, searching for the legendary treasures of an ancient empire. I can feel the bravery of the previous owner. How she dreamt of an adventure and fame. You wish to know where her path led her? certainly do and listen i shall recount for you to you the story of the search for the gemstone cave tell me about the gemstone i hear hooves clattering wheels creaking i smell the smoke of campfire wind kisses my face gently uh, gently and rain washes it appears from we are on a road heading north we are on our way to the no man's land beyond the edge of the map which promise, uh, promises a home to those who do not shy away from adventure. Those lands are where we will find our freedom, prosperity. Mm -hmm. I'm Jackson Trester, from the Tendek Plains, the heart of the great Talden Empire. My family is old, but not rich. My inheritance, youngest daughter barely covered the horses, cart and supplies for this. Who cares? My real inheritance, sharp mind, and strong hands ready for hard work. Children will know riches that my ancestors could hardly dream of. A thousand years ago, on the Empire's orders, the Fifth Army of Exploration mapped the region around the Great Selen River. Endless miles of plains, hills, woods and swamps. My ancestor served in this army, and his diary mentions a particular cave filled with wonderful gemstones, floor to ceiling. Army turned back, leaving its gems unclaimed for centuries. Now they'll be mine. On what? Go on. Why did the army leave the gems untouched? It's a real mystery. My ancestors spared no words describing the beauty and riches of the cave, even described how to find it, but he didn't explain why. The army had left such treasure behind. Maybe that part of the diary was lost? Well, even more interesting then. Maybe we'll get to shed some light on this ancient history. What will you do when you find the mine? Isn't it obvious? I claim I, I claim the land where the cave is located as my own property and a part of the Talden Empire. Then anyone tries to take it from me? They'll have to deal with not just me, but the Imperial Army as well. Why do you think the gems are still there a thousand years later? Of course, so much time has passed. A lot could have changed. There are still no big cities in those wide lands to this day. If someone were mining gemstones there, I think we'd have heard about it. Go on. We reach the area described in my ancestor's diary. The locals from the tiny villages scattered in the area call this region the Came Land. It's a strange, eerie place. What we originally took for hills as we passed through turned out to be ancient mounds, where you uh, might find the buried bones of unbelievably ancient creatures, older even than Earthfall. That gemstone cave must be around here somewhere. After a long and difficult search, Fortune finally smiled on us, all bade a wry, cunning smile. Among the hills, we caught a bunch of kobolds, all dressed up like nobles at some celebration. Their filthy, scaly bodies were decorated with shining gemstones, and their leader proudly wore an ancient Talding knee pad on his head. Their interrogation didn't take long. After decapitating one of them, they almost the others almost fell over themselves to tell us where they found their own. 
cave proved to be even more gorgeous than I'd imagined. I read my ancestor's diary. It was a huge hall, shining with gems, all colors and hues. We didn't have any problem evicting the kobolds once we'd killed half their tribe. The other half just fled. Apparently wanting the last word, a word, an old kobold, their chieftain, maybe, or a shaman, shook his tiny fist at us and yelled a curse. I just laughed and threw a torch at him and he disappeared. I had one. The gyms of the 5th army were... What exactly did the old kobold yell? He yelled that they would go, but that we would stay forever. What a curse. Oh no, I was already going to claim the lands anyway. To try exploring the mounds? We did. The best scout noticed an obviously artificial entrance into one of the mounds. He and a small team went in to explore it. Several hours later, a dense smoke rushed out of the mound. It began to rumble, and then it exploded. All that remained was a smoldering crater. I didn't risk fooling around with my with any ancient legacies after that, but later we had enough of our own trouble to worry about. Go on. Inside we found an ancient girders supporting the walls and rusty tools scattered around. There were also graves, several of which had been opened by the kobolds, with pieces of ancient Talden armor in them. It seems some ancient people had been mining gems here after all. Unfortunately, we had no way to find out what happened to them, so I declared the mine my property and began our own work. A small town quickly grew up around the mine. First it was just locals, then people started traveling from afar. Miners, bards, brewers, priests, and of course traders of all kinds. Kaldor sent a squad of soldiers to guard the new imperial mine and trade routes as well. My lands prospered. Too bad it didn't last long. It took us less than a year to discover what happened to the mine's previous owners and why it had been abandoned. What did you do with the exhumed remains? We reburied them, reburied them honorably. They became the first residents of our small youth seven, which we had to expend considerably not long after. Go on. Things were going great, but then rumor of an epidemic started spreading through the town. I did my best to reassure the locals, though by that time I knew better than anyone that grey stains on the skin along with nosebleed was essentially a death scent. The mine's previous owners didn't just leave, they died out of, from ash leprosy. We were infected when we explored their graves. The best clerics and healers our money could buy all said the same thing. The disease wasn't curable. I still held hope that if I bought enough time we could find a cure. News of the epidemic reached the Imperial Army. They were ordered to quarantine the entire area and our guardians became our jailers overnight. The settlement was sealed off, a tribal cordon of guards. We continued mining gemstones like before, but the traders took advantage of our situation and raised their price. People were dying. The town lived on as the Empire kept sending a new workforce. Branded criminal. Thanks to the efforts of our healers, I lived longer than many others. Soon I didn't even dare leave my house. It seemed not a single person in the settlement didn't wish me dead. I died alone, slowly rotting alive, surrounded by treasure beyond measure, a leper queen of a doomed kingdom. My last thought was of how funny the kobolds could have seemed, and how quickly it had come. Tell me more about this disease. Could it cause a new epidemic among the subjects? No, no, worry not. Ash leprosy may have been incurable in Jack Singh's time, but the Talons eradicated it completely centuries ago. Besides, it is impossible that any trace remains of the leprosy prosarium that surrounded the main so long ago. What happened to the city after the Jaxine died? The mine was inherited by her family. The colony of lepers continued mining gemstones for many years, until the mine was depleted. Once the mine was done, the town slowly died out. 
Once the last leper had died, the Empire sent a group of clerics and wizards to him. They used prayers and spells to reduce the infected town to save ashes and collapse the entrance. He replied. One and a half thousand years have since then. No one even remembers the colony existed there anymore. As for the mine, it can probably still be found in the Camelands, but there are no longer any treasures there to claim. Thank you for this. <sighs> Could you tell me one of your stories again? Something else. Your stories are amazing. You make it sound as though you're actually there in the moment. The storyteller nods. I gained this gift after I lost my life. When I touch relics, I can feel the thoughts and emotions of those who previously owned them. If the emotions are strong enough, I can even see the events that left those impressions. Great! Thank you very much! Thank you very much for this story! 